Hi, this is Brock Palin from KNHPC. I'm going to do a quick demonstration of how to get a VNC remote desktop on a Flux Compute node. This will let you have graphical desktops in places where traditionally you could only run uh, text only commands. So the first thing I need to do is I need to set my VNC password. I'm already logged into one of the Flux login nodes here and to create set the password, I only need this the first time, is I run the command VNC password. The password you set here should be a password you do not use anywhere else. VNC stores its password in a very naive way and it sends it in a very uh, vulnerable form over the network. So you use a different password and use anywhere else. At this point I've set the password. So what I need to do now is, is I need to get a VNC server running on one of the compute nodes. The way I do that is, is I actually have a PBS script that will create a VNC server on one of the compute nodes for me. You'll notice this is just a normal script. I can ask for multiple processors. I can even ask for multiple nodes as the remote desktop created will inherit the PBS environment and commands like MPI run and other applications that take advantage of multiple processors in multiple machines will be able to actually do that. The real command here though is VNC server minus geometry which is the size of the desktop I want and then I need this minus FG for the foreground. If I don't have the foreground this will die right away. You could always create the VNC server inside an interactive PBS job also if you wanted to. It's a Unix command like anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this job. At this point I can either wait for PBS to email me that the job started um, if I've set those options inside the PBS script or I can use QSTAT to check the status of the job. Okay, my job has now started running. At this point, because VNC is a server that I've started, I need to find out the port that it's running on and the machine assigned to my job on which it is running. The easiest way to do that is, is I can either use QSTAT minus N to find the first processor, but I also need to know what port it's running on, because if there's multiple VNC servers running on a machine, the port numbers increment by one for every one of them. So what I can do here is, is I can find the most recent uh, VNC log file created in my home directory. The easiest way to do it is ls minus RT to sort and reverse by time on my home directory dot VNC. You can see here that VNC started up on Nix 5508 and it is on display 1 and that's going to be important for creating our tunnel and for connecting to VNC. I need to create an SSH tunnel to be able to actually get access to the compute node. So the VNC client is going to run on my local machine but the server is running on a compute node which is not accessible outside the cluster environment. The way I get around that is is I create an SSH tunnel into the cluster network through the flux transfer node. The way I do that on a, on a Mac or a Linux machine is with SSH port forwarding. On Windows users you can also do SSH port forwarding with PuTTY. Refer to our blog post on the Kane HPC website for how to do that. But what I have to do is that I have to specify which port I want to forward on my local machine. And VNC ports always start at 5900. It's 5900 plus the display number. So in this case, the display number was 1. So the port I want to forward is 5901 colon the machine my display is running on, which is Nix 5508 colon the port I want to forward from that machine. So 5901. And then the machine I actually am SSHing to. So in this case, I'm going to connect to the flux transfer node which is flux .edu. You might be wondering how can I actually SSH to the flux transfer node that doesn't allow SSH. It allows SSH it just doesn't allow you to create a shell so it only lets you run commands like SCP and SFTP but it still lets you create a tunnel. So in this case it prompts me for my password and not my M token because I'm going to the transfer node and see it still gives me the banner but it never lets me actually run any commands but it still created my tunnel for me so at this point I can run any VNC viewer um, Linux users can run VNC viewer which is available in pretty much any um, a repo for yours uh, the machine you're on uh, Mac users I'm going to use chicken of the VNC which you can find a link to on our Kane HPC blog post uh, Windows users you can get like type VNC or any VNC viewer will work
So in this case, I need to say new connection. It's going to ask me what host I want to connect to, the display number or port number, and the password I set when I ran VNC password. And because we're doing SSH tunneling, the post is always going to be localhost. The display number is the display created here. So in this case, one. If it was asking for the port, it would be the port we specified here, which is 5900 plus the display number. And then the password I set in my VNC password, which is... And this actually logged me directly into the node. So you'll see here, I am on Nix 5508. I have four processors available to me. Oop, I have something messed up in my environment, but normally MPI would work just fine for me. And I would be able to run parallel jobs and do all sorts of things, including graphical applications such as MATLAB and they will be able to take advantage of all the cores on the machines and the memory and everything else because it is still a job running on the cluster so it has access to the 4 gigs per core on standard flux 25 gigs per core on large memory flux GPUs on flux G Xeon Phi's and any other resources we have available but you have fully interactive graphical application Plus, if you're using the, v, the v, university VPN, you can go home and connect to a cluster node uh, desktop as you wish. And you can connect and reconnect with the viewer all you want. As long as the VNC server is running, you can connect to it. One thing I would recommend you, though, if you're not actually actively using it, is to completely shut down your VNC system. Um, which then stops your PBS job so that those resources are free to for other members of your research group. But you can get uh, a graphical desktop now on the compute cluster. You can run parallel jobs um, from that graphical desktop. So you can use things like our parallel debugger without having X windows, um, without having to leave an SSH connection with X forwarding up the entire time of the job. You can use applications like MATLAB, or any of the graphical desktops for any of the machines um, without having to have low performance or having to have everything be scripted up so you can actually have these graphical applications use large amounts of memory high amounts of CPU or anything where you need to attach to a process that needs that sort of thing if you have any questions you can send us an email to hpc-support at umich.edu